What's up, everybody? Nick Dwyer back with you for the 10th inning with another edition of This Day in Sports History. In yesterday's edition, we saw the Montreal Canadiens win their fourth consecutive Stanley Cup in their fourth consecutive finals appearance in 1979. We don't have anything like that today, but we have some interesting stuff. So if you're new to the channel and you like what you see, click that subscribe button down there. And if you all enjoy the video, leave a like on it for me. And without further ado, let's get into it. This Day in Sports History. Today we start out in 1884 with the Union Association Baseball and we looked at the one-armed pitcher Hugh Daly who fanned 13 batters in the 10-6 victory against the Baltimore Monumentals. He was 36 years old, a one-armed pitcher, not the easiest job in the world. Daly made it worth that day though, striking out 13 batters on his way to get the victory. Moving up to 1911, we have a record and it's not really a record that anyone wants. Well, it's not a record anymore. It was a record. The Boston Rustlers pitcher Cliff Curtis lost his 23rd consecutive game when they went up against the Cardinals and lost 3-1. Curtis went 9 innings that day, 7 hits allowed, 3 runs, 4 walks, and 2 strikeouts. They ended up losing 3-1. Curtis, 23rd loss in a row. And that was a record up until Anthony Young, the former New York Mets pitcher, ended up losing 27 in a row. But that record lasted a while. Curtis, at the time, 23 losses in a row. Even though it's not a record anymore, still not something you really want on your resume. Moving to 1955, we have the oldest man ever to finish a Grand Prix, and he ended up finishing in 6th place in the 1955 Grand Prix, Louis Chiron. Going to 1962, approximately a year after Roger Maris surpassed Babe Ruth's home single-season home run record, Roger Maris was in the news once again for something else good. Going up against the Angels that day, the Yankees ended up winning 2-1 and Roger Maris drew 5 walks that day, 4 of them intentional, 1 of them not. In his first at bat, Roger Maris flew out to right field, so he was 0-1 for 1 at that point. The next 5 at bats, they wouldn't even be considered at bats. He drew a walk to the next at bat and then the next 4 at bats after that for him, he was intentionally walked. Talked about being a feared hitter right there. That's what the likes of Barry Bonds and Albert Pujols, how dangerous Maris was at the time. Maris ended up 0 for 1 that game with 5 walks to his name in the Yankees 2 to 1 victory. A year later in 1963 at the European Cup final, AC Milan was going up against Benfica and Milan ended up defeating Benfica 2 to 1 for their first European Cup title. Benfica got out to the early lead after a 19th minute goal by Asuebo, but Milan came right back. Jose Altafani scored twice in the 58th and 69th minute after halftime to give Milan a 2-1 lead, a lead they would never look back on. Move up 12 years and we have the 8th ABA Championship in 1975 pitting the Kentucky Colonels up against the Indiana Pacers. It seems like every time we talk about the ABA, it's either the George McGinnis-led Pacers or the Dan Issel-led Kentucky Colonels. Well, this time, it happens to be both. The Colonels were not only led by Issel, but they were also led by the monster artist Gilmore. Gilmore really helped the Colonels in this series, and the Colonels ended up defeating the Pacers four games to one. McGinnis did everything he could for the Pacers to try to mount a comeback, but it just wasn't enough for them and Gilmore proved to be too much for the Pacers to handle. In the Game 5 victory, which ended up being the end of the series, Gilmore had 31 points and 28 rebounds to give the Colonels another championship. Ten years later, and we move on to baseball, in 1985, Pete Rose passed Hank Aaron for the all-time run leader in the National League. Now overall, Hank Aaron is still above Pete Rose when it comes to all-time runs. Aaron had 2,000 174 runs in his career. However, Aaron played the last two seasons of his career in the American League and he scored 67 of those runs at that time. Rose played his whole career in the National League and on this day he scored his 2,108th run in the top of the sixth inning when nicely belted a home run causing him to score. Rose would end up 
being the NL all-time run leader up until 2007 when Barry Bonds surpassed Rose in his final season when he had 62 total runs. Moving to 1988, we have the LPGA Championship at the Jack Nicholas Golf Course and Sherry Turner birdies on the final two holes to win her only major title, one stroke ahead of runner-up Amy Alcott. Two years later in 1990, Andre Dawson of the Chicago Cubs receives five intentional walks in a game. We heard what Roger Maris got. He got five walks, four of them intentional. Dawson got five intentional walks in a game. Again, talking about being a feared hitter, that's exactly what Dawson was. In 1992, at the NHL Clarence Campbell Conference Final, you saw the Chicago Blackhawks going up against the Edmonton Oilers. And, well, this really wasn't a series. The Blackhawks ended up sweeping the Oilers four games to none, winning the final game 5-1 to one after going up 5 to nothing within the first two periods. The Oilers tried to strike back, scoring one goal in the third period. It wasn't enough, though. The Blackhawks had dominated this whole series. They would go on, move to the Stanley Cup. A year later in boxing, you saw Riddick Bowe going up against Jesse Ferguson. And Bowe... Defending his heavyweight boxing title for the second time, got a technical knockout on Ferguson 17 seconds into round two. At the end of round one, Ferguson just barely made it up to his feet after a nine count by the referee, but it was pretty clear Bo was the better fighter here, and he ended up winning on the technical knockout. In 1996, at the fourth UEFA Champions League final, Juventus defeated Ajax in penalties. The game was 1-1 at the end of regulation, but Juventus ended up winning 4-2 on penalties. Ajax ended up missing the first and the fourth penalty shot. Therefore, all Juventus had to do, they had to make the fourth penalty shot. They had already made the previous three. They ended up making the fourth with Vladimir Grugovic making the final kick to give Juventus that Champions League final. In 2001, at the NHL Eastern Conference Finals, the Devils were going up against the Penguins, and the Devils defeated the Penguins four games to one. After a loss in Game 2 for the Devils, they ended up shutting the Penguins out in Games 3 and 4, and then in Game 5, they ended up closing the door, making their trip to the final. In 2003, Anika Sorenstam becomes the first woman to play in the PGA Tour in 58 years. She ended up missing the cut after the second round of the tournament, but she was already one of the most dominant golfers in golf history. So why not be allowed to play with the men? In her time with women's golf, 72 LPGA championships and 10 major titles. She was clearly one of the best and earned her chance to have a tournament with the men. She ended up getting cut, but it was still a hell of a run. In the 2004 NHL Eastern Conference Finals, the Tampa Bay Lightning were going up against the Philadelphia Flyers, and this is one of the best conference finals in recent memory. The Lightning ended up winning the series four games to three after an overtime game in Game 6 to force Game 7 in which the Flyers won. The Lightning ended up winning Game 7, 2-1 after a goal 10 minutes into the second period which gave them that 2-1 lead and they wouldn't look back. No one else scored throughout the remainder of the game. They ended up going to the Stanley Cup. Also in 2004, the Super Rugby Final, the ACT Brumbries claimed their second title on a 47-38 victory over the Canterbury Crusaders. The Brumbies winners, Mark Gerard and Joe Rolfe, combined for five total tries in the game to help give the Brumbies the victory over the Crusaders. Then finally in 2004, at the FA Cup title, Manchester United defeated Millwall 3-0. Cristiano Ronaldo ended up scoring the first goal for Man U in the first half. Then Ruud van Nistelrooy ended up adding two more goals in the second half to give Man U a 3-0 victory. At the 2007 NHL Western Conference Finals, the Anaheim Ducks were going up against the Detroit Red Wings. And the Ducks ended up winning the series Four games to two after a 4-3 victory. The Dutch were up 3-0 after two periods. Detroit made a fight in the third period, scoring three goals, but the Dutch scored one goal in the third period, just had enough to win, 4-3 to move on to the Stanley Cup. In 2010 at the UEFA Champions League final, Internazionale ended up defeating Bayern Munich 2-0 2-0 for Inter's third title and the first treble, which was three separate trophies in the same season. Inter's Diego Matillo ended up scoring two goals to give them the victory in the 35th and the 70th minute. And then finally in the 2012 NHL Western Conference Finals, the Los Angeles Kings defeated the Phoenix Coyotes 
four games to one after a 4-3 overtime victory. After a 4-3 overtime victory win with Dustin Penner getting the game-winning goal almost 18 minutes into that overtime period. So that's what happened on this day in sports history. Let me know if I left anything out. Let me know what was the most interesting thing that happened on this day. And let me know if you guys have any other suggestions for a series other than this day in sports history. Because again, I'm having fun on this. I know it can be a little repetitive, but I'm having fun. Let me know if you have any other suggestions. For Nick Wire and the 10th inning, see ya.